Welcome to Applied Zen's Corporate Training Workshops. Applied Zen focuses on the application of principles from the art of war and Zen into two areas, corporate development for managers and team building. The focus is on building stronger teams through applied lessons in strategy, conflict management, and stable emotion. The art of war is the oldest and most recognized text on strategy, which can be applied to life or the business world for success. In part, it includes strategic and leadership components that have been applied numerous times in differing circumstances in the last two and a half thousand years. Before we further discuss the components of the courses and their lessons, I would like to introduce our founder, Dr. Jason Armstrong. Dr. Armstrong has been studying the art of strategy through Japanese karate for more than 20 years. He has lived in Japan with a karate master and was the general manager of a company in Tokyo. His corporate training began at Amgen in California, where he established a martial arts program for staff more than 10 years ago. By applying strategic approaches related to conflict and growth, Dr. Armstrong had achieved CEO levels by his early 30s. And in the last seven or eight years, he has held senior corporate positions in the USA and Australia, including CEO levels. Currently, our seminars are offered in two main areas, team building and managerial development. The team building workshop is a three hour course for staff focused on conflict, team trust interactions, strategy, and stable emotion for clear decision making. In this workshop, approximately 50% of the course involves the staff members engaging in physical interaction drills. These interactions are based on self defense moves and enable the participants to experience the presented concepts. The management course is similar in a few ways, but involves more presentation based learning and fewer physical drills. This course has a much stronger emphasis on strategy and leadership. Applied Zen offers these workshops on-site at your company or at our facilities in Australia and the USA. Additionally, DVDs can be ordered or you can download a video course online. We will now take a look at some of the course content and show a few sample clips taken from workshops. Before we get into the art of war, I just want to talk about the Zen and some of the physical drills that we do. It depends on the workshop location, whether we do it. But Zen is not a religion, firstly. It's simply a way of making very clear decisions in turbulent situations. Hence, it was adopted by people like the samurai and martial artists. It obviously relates to strategy, and the art of war as a text has concepts from it built into it. The physical drills we do explore things like etiquette, conflict management, and clear decision making in meetings or negotiations, which is really crucial to corporate performance at all levels. Okay, we're going to begin first with a very brief introduction as to what is the art of war and strategy, how does it relate to business, and what is Zen, and what's that got to do with both strategy and how can it be incorporated into the business or corporate environment. Firstly, uh, the earliest known document on strategy is Sun Tzu, The Art of War. It's also regarded as the most complete, and it was done about two and a half thousand years ago and it's been used in war, it's been used in business, it's been used in goal attainment in people's life for thousands of years. Secondly, if we now look at Zen, it's not a religion, firstly. Zen is really a number of concepts for contemplation. It doesn't offer a reward or salvation for those who follow it. It simply allows self-discovery and an understanding of those around you. So in the business world, we often talk about SWOT. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. The idea of understanding yourself and understanding others, including partners as well as competitors, is how we're going to integrate that side of things into strategy. Okay. Um, Sun Tzu is very, very big on the idea of alliances and partners. So we'll put this into all sorts of categories. So Sun Tzu would say make everyone a partner in one way or another. And if you go through something like Stephen Covey's course, he would say win-win, make everything a positive relationship. So fellow company members who absolutely want to be in alliance. Alliances is those people you can go out in the industry and part with other companies to actually uh, get winning strategies in your business. We're going to talk to, about that quite a bit. The other one which might sound a little bit strange is competitors. How do you make a competitor a partner? That is, make them do what you want. Okay. Um, I'm grabbing with one hand. Yeah. Nice length. 
All right, so next a big guy compared to me. Let's say he grabs me here. Obviously, we're in competition here. He's an opponent without a doubt. I try and hit him. I can't. He just leans out. I probably can't move this too well. So how do I get access to what I need to access his head? All right, one answer is I just reach down here, grab him by the family jewels. Right away, I've now got access into his head what I actually want to strike. So by putting him in a what is a predetermined response by me, I'm getting my competition to act like a partner. And that's one of the ideas. Thanks. Master of one or jack of all trades is another thing related to a clause that Sun Tzu mentions. And that statement made by Sun Tzu was really trying to defend or attack too many areas divides the troops and leaves openings and weaknesses. So what this really means in a uh, business sense is are you too diverse in business? So are you attacking too many products? Have you got your staff divided too much and too many tasks? And a lot of the other systems we talked about earlier strategically train and position you so you can handle a better load. But nonetheless, diversity is a very real problem and lack of focus. So I want to go into that for a while and relate that to internal operations as well as dealing with competitors. All right, we've talked a lot about structure. We've talked about fluidity within structure. Uh, around business plans, project management, etc. I'm coming back now to strategy, and this is actually a corporate strategy map. It could be viewed in two ways. One is the development of a corporate entity over time, or it could be viewed as someone having a project over time that they want to evolve. The idea is we've got four snapshots of the company at different time points, and generally the color at any one point is getting darker as we develop more and we have segments within the company or the project that are vertical, they span across all segments of the company, and we have segments that are specific, in this case markets we're attacking. What I want to do now is go through and expand on this map in a few ways, how you use them, why they're important, as well as how you flush them out to put meat behind them. Alright, this slide is now showing our business development strategy overlaid on the strategy map we talked about earlier. So what you've got here is each individual box representing a particular market, and again it's applied Zen as an example. We've got behind it the business development areas that are assisting that segment. And this one also shows the partner slash alliance strategy we talked about before versus trying to do it on your own. So that you're really leveraging high value partners in some way to bring business in versus doing the hard work yourself. Okay, this is important for business, but it's very important for martial arts too. Uh, too much structure. So I've just gone through a bunch of uh, slides talking briefly on structure behind actions. And structure in your life is great, but too much structure is a problem. In the business world it gives you a lot of bureaucracy and it slows you down. The Zen analogy here is what's the difference between a, a monkey and a pig in a cage? Right? The answer is absolutely nothing. Both of them sit there and look at you. They can't do anything. But they're bound by the cage. Take them out. Now the monkey's got the intelligence and dexterity to achieve all sorts of things the pig cannot. All right, so if you put too much structure around an individual, it's a problem. The saying, be like water, Bruce Lee used to use it, saying, for life, for business, for martial arts, be like water. The idea is that it is extremely fluid, right? It can um, envelop anything. So the idea, again, if you've got structure, your competitor can analyze it and work a way around it. If you're formless, they cannot work a way around it. That's the concept. The secondly, water is a good analogy because in the process of being formless, it's also highly efficient. It takes a lot the, the path of least resistance when it travels. Okay, I'll come back now to Vol, the first character uh, we talked about, meaning war. To strategically obtain victory without conflict, the prevention of it. Um, three things that Sun Tzu mentions, and we're going to get through more over time. I brought these three up first to give examples. Intelligence, leadership, and alliances. Now, intelligence in Sun Tzu's days was spice. Uh, you can't do that today. You'll get arrested without doing that uh, in the corporate sense. But the idea here is market research. And we'll go through the examples of what the extent of that should be versus what most people tend to do in terms of gathering intelligence about their business. Uh, leadership. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned from military and leadership and applied in the workplace. For example, take someone to war, they've got to be willing to go and die for them. It's not quite that severe in your company, hopefully. Um, but if you can get people to follow, there's obviously lessons to be learned in that sort of extreme. 
Some of it we will cover tonight, but not very much. It's a different module that we have. This one we will cover quite a bit, but partners or alliances. So if we get into this idea, and I've put in here that as a comparison to a, a modern day person teaching corporate development, Stephen Covey, seven habits of highly effective people look at habit three and habit six, win-win relationships and synergize. These are very much what partnerships and alliances are all about. I'm going to give a business example now that I was involved in a number of years ago related to that very point.